Hydraulic systems use oil or other liquids to transmit force. They are the ideal system because they are a closed system. If all the components are properly designed, properly installed, and maintained, there is no reason why a hydraulic system should not run smoothly for a long time. Dirt is the cause of 60% of all hydraulic system problems. It contaminates the fluid, tears away at seals, causes pump failures, makes valves stick, and raises operating temperatures. Most companies pay twice for their hydraulic fluids. Once when they buy them, and again when they pay for mistakes in storing, handling, and using them. Hydraulic fluid must be handled carefully from the moment it arrives. Drums should be kept indoors in a clean, heated, ventilated room, away from dust, chemical fumes, and metal particles. The bung holes are not airtight. When stored outside, heat makes the fluid expand and air is pushed out around the threads. When the fluid cools, it contracts and air is drawn back into the drum. When a drum is stored upright and unprotected, water and dirt will also be drawn into the drum and the fluid will be contaminated before the drum is even open. Storing a drum on its side, with the axis of the bungs horizontal, eliminates these problems and the pressure of the fluid against the bung improves the seal. When it is necessary to store the drums outside, they must be placed on their sides and protected from the weather. The most usual sign of trouble in hydraulic systems is a loss of pressure somewhere beyond the pump, either gradual or abrupt. In addition to this possibility being observed on a pressure gauge, there will be loss of power from the work cylinder. It may stall or move more slowly than normal. Any component in the system may be at fault, but the three most likely trouble spots are the pump suction strainer, the relief valve sticking, or piston packing leaking. The pump suction strainer, when it clogs with dirt, is the most frequent cause of low pressure. The system often becomes noisy when the filter clogs, starving the pump of oil, and the pump begins to cavitate. Suction strainers may be in the line before the pump or submerged in the oil reservoir. Remove and clean the strainer, whether it looks dirty or not. Use compressed air blowing from the inside out. If it is damaged or does not clean up well, replace it. The oil level in the reservoir is also very important. If it is too low, air can enter the system when the pump is started. The oil should be at least two inches above the pump suction strainer. The return lines must also be well below the oil level or foaming will occur, causing air to be drawn into the system. A leak in the suction piping draws air and dirt into the system. Air tears away at pumps, causing the system to lose efficiency and power. Noise, especially intermittent noise, indicates air is entering the suction system. Squirt oil around each joint. If the noise stops, that is the joint where the air is entering. A major cause of short oil life is operation at too high a temperature. When a system operates at 140 degrees Fahrenheit or above, oxidation is speeded up. This causes acid and sludge to form in the oil, resulting in rapid wear and corrosion of moving parts. 
the oil temperature can be checked by placing your hand on the reservoir below the oil level. At normal temperatures, the reservoir will be hot, but you should be able to hold your hand there for a few seconds. If it is too hot to touch, check it with a thermometer and add cooling equipment if necessary. Take a sample of the oil and compare the color and body with an unused sample of the same oil. A slight darkening is usually not serious. A deep dark color or thickening of the oil may indicate serious deterioration. If the oil is dark and you can feel grit in it, the oil should be changed immediately. Oil samples can also be sent to a laboratory to be tested. Visual inspection is important, but it can never tell how much or what type of contamination is present. If contamination is allowed to continue, conditions will only get worse. Pumps, valves, gauges, piping and seals will begin to leak and the entire system will be in trouble. If the oil in the system is contaminated, it must be drained. If contamination is very bad, a cleaning fluid should be flushed through the system to remove as much dirt as possible. Before refilling, wipe the top of the reservoir clean. Never blow the dirt off. Compressed air will force the dirt through the air filters and into the tank. The interior of the reservoir should also be cleaned. Be sure to remove all sludge, dirt, grit, and lint. Check the air breather filter. Make sure it is clean or replace it. If the suction strainer is located in the reservoir, clean or replace it. When reassembling the reservoir, make sure that all covers fit well, that gaskets are in place, and that all bolts are pulled down tight. When refilling, it is best to bring the drum directly to the reservoir. This will eliminate extra handling. The more the oil is handled, the more dirt it will accumulate. Clean the top of the drum of any dust, dirt, or moisture. With a lint-free rag, carefully clean the reservoir filler cap and around the filler opening. To handle the oil properly, insert a hand pump into the drum and pump the oil directly into the reservoir. Contamination of the system will result if equipment used to handle other oils or fluids is also used in the handling of hydraulic fluids. With a lint-free rag, clean the exterior of the hose before inserting it into the reservoir opening. Wrap a clean, lint-free rag around the hose and filler opening to keep dusty air out. When adding oil, use only the oil recommended by the manufacturer. Never mix different brands, grades, or types of oil together. If the reservoir filler opening does not contain a wire mesh filter, a clean funnel equipped with a filter should be used. If other containers must be used, they should be thoroughly cleaned and kept covered maintaining the same precautions that are employed when using a hand pump. After filling the reservoir, make sure the filler cap is replaced and closed properly. The system should never be run while any strainers, filters, or seals are not in place. 
Operators should be trained to report any changes in the system or equipment action. If the equipment slows down or is erratic in operation, something in the system is wearing or filters may be clogged. When the oil level in the reservoir needs frequent replenishment, it is an indication of an external oil leak. Oil leaks are unsafe and costly. Regular inspections of the entire system can often detect an external leak before damage can be done. Oil on the floor generally means there is a leak in the system. In many cases, internal leaks can be detected by feeling for hot spots at various locations. Check the pump, piping, valves, pistons, and other locations. Preventive maintenance of hydraulic systems starts with storing and handling the fluid correctly, maintaining the system properly, looking for problem areas, correcting problems as they occur, and above all, maintaining cleanliness throughout the entire system. Preventive maintenance must be part of the system if serious and costly repairs are to be avoided and downtime cut to a minimum.